Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. I'm not an FL Studio instructor, but I do use FL Studio with TuneTrack on my channel here and there, hence this video. I bought uh, FL Studio Fruity Loops over 20 years ago for under $100, and I'm still using that same license without paying for upgrades. That's why I respect ImageLine so much. But the market of primarily, not entirely, who, who uses FL Studio is typically for EDM style composers and it works in a completely unique way which is baffling to me especially for my particular tune track workflow hence this video so i want to present to you the problem and then the solution and if you're an experienced fl user and you see a way to optimize this workflow please comment below and i will link to your solution so here we go so i have a fresh project in fl studio and if I just hit play, the default behavior, we'll watch the current time indicator right here. The behavior of FL Studio is it will just play one measure and that's it, as we can see here in the rack. Or if we switch over to song mode, which is where I'm gonna be for the rest of this video and hit play, we'll see that the playlist track is playing, but it's still only looping one measure. Why is that? I don't know. I've been told that's the way it is. End of story. And FL Studio is such a unique market. That's why it's, it's baffling to me, but its workflow is very sensible to its market. So if it only loops one measure, what happens if I drag Easy Drummer 3 out to a playlist track and drop it on one of the tracks? This is how I load uh, plugins in FL Studio. And I'll just make a song instantly. I'll drag this down to the song creator and drop it. If, if the song creator seems interesting to you, you don't know what it is. I have a whole series on it on my channel. Check it out. But I just made an entire drum song instantly. It's about 125 or so measures long. Okay. And when I dropped my virtual instrument on a playlist track, I got a one single measure empty block. Typically MIDI goes into this timeline, but this is empty. It's just an empty block where you would write your own MIDI. Now, if I hit play, even though I have a 120 something long measure song, Fruity Loops only loops one measure. And that's because Fruity Loops in song mode possibly in rack mode, I'm not sure, only plays the length of this timeline as long as it has content in it. And the content right now is a single measure empty MIDI block. So even though I have a full song here in Easy Drummer 3, it still only loops one single measure. And I uh, might be driving some FL Studio people crazy that aren't familiar with TuneTrack right now, so I'll explain the reason why I'm dealing with it this way. Um, the number one solution to getting around this problem is to take this MIDI and drag it to FL Studio and drop it here and just have your MIDI in FL Studio. And no matter how hard I explain to them, I, do, I can't operate that way because if I operate that way, I lose 80% of tune tracks value by not having the MIDI in the song track here where I can edit it use the humanation Humanization the bandmate the edit play style. It's pretty endless the, the editing features and easy drummer that FL studio can't do So once I drag the MIDI out of a tune track product, I can no longer use those features anymore That's why the MIDI must stay in the tune track product and a rebuttal which uh, people just don't understand the FL Studio users that don't understand TuneTrack, which is totally understandable. I don't understand FL Studio. Um, we'll just drag it back. Well, you can't. You have to export it out of FL Studio and then drag it back. You can't take just MIDI out of FL Studio and drag it back into Easy Drummer Song Track. It doesn't work that way. So you can see how there's a one-way street. So how do I get around this one measure loop? Not just for this moment, but forever. Well, the workflow is this. Uh, mousing over the side of this empty MIDI block, I can just start scrubbing it to the right. And I'll zoom out. 
I'll just keep scrubbing it to the right. And this is a pretty tedious task. But if you recall what I said earlier is the FL Studio, you know, playlist timeline, it will play as long as there's content in the timeline, even if it's an empty MIDI block, which is what this is right here. And I've dragged it out almost 400 measures. I might drag this out to a thousand measures. I don't know. The point is the length of this empty MIDI block, you want to drag it out as long as your longest song could potentially be. So, I mean, if you're scoring a movie and you're doing a 15 minute, you know, soundtrack, then you're going to want to figure out how many measures at what tempo is, you know, 15 minute song track. So 785 measures is pretty safe. Again, we're going to talk about templates and not do this every time we open up FL Studio. We're going to do it only once. I'm doing it right now. So now I have a almost 800 measure long empty MIDI block. So now if I select, now if I keep an eye on my song track in Easy Drummer 3 and hit play, it will play forever, or at least for the next 800 measures, which is plenty of time since this full song is only 125 measures long. Better than that, now that this content is here, that's not making any noise, it's just empty content, I can actually click anywhere I want in this 800 measures and hit play from that time, right? There's no drums because the drums end around here. So I'll click on what, 97, 95. So once I get this empty content into the playlist timeline here, now Easy Drummer 3 is all of a sudden behaving like any other DAW. Now, do I have to do this every time? No. Let's talk about <clears throat> FL Studio templates. If you notice, when you go in FL Studio, you go to File, you can create a new file from a template. I want this workflow to be my template so I never have to recreate it ever again. What I do is I will go to File, Save As, and I'll call this my Tune Track template. And I'll save it on the desktop just for, for argument's sake. You can actually go right to the correct directory, but just so you have a visual of this workflow, I'll save it to my desktop. It's called Tune Tracks Template. And then there's a directory on your computer. Go into your PC. This is Windows 11, by the way. If you're on a 32-bit system, it might be in the program files 86, but I'm on a 64-bit system. So I'll go into my main drive, program files, image line, FL Studio, whatever version number you're on, data, templates. And we come up to a folder here with a bunch of folders in it. Here's our um, segregation of templates that Fruity Loops uh, FL Studio uses. I can just drag my Tune Track template folder into here. Or if you want to go crazy and make a bunch of templates, I'll just create a folder. And I'll call it Shooty. So we know all of my templates that I want are going to be in this folder. And I'll drag that Tune Track template uh, FL Studio file that I created into this directory into this brand new folder I just made. Let me close and open Fruity Loops. Now, if I go to File, New from Template, there's a Shooty folder right there. And here's my Tune Track template. Here's my 800 measure long empty MIDI block. And now I can just click wherever I want and hit play. Even if it's, you know, 600 measures down the load, down, down the line. Now I can navigate like it's any other DAWs timeline. And no offense to the FL Studio workflow, I'm not gonna pretend I understand it completely. But now it behaves as if I was in Pro Tools or Reaper or Cubase or fill in the blank of the DAW you use. 
And now it's a beautiful thing. Now I can build songs out in a super linear fashion, as opposed to the making beats workflow, which is just not my market. That's not what I do. So that's how it works. If you have a way to optimize this workflow, besides saying, Sean, just drag the MIDI out of Easy Drummer into FL Studio, you obviously don't understand uh, the purpose of this video. So people are going to comment that anyway. I don't, that's not the solution for me. I need the MIDI to remain inside my plugin and to be able to play and navigate like any other DAW. And that's why I presented this video to you. And if you're on Mac, let me switch over to Mac real quick. When trying to save templates on Mac, I'll go into my applications folder. I'll find image line, Fruity Loops, right here, Fruity Loops. And I'll right click on the application and I'll show the contents of the app. And that'll let us explore it. And I'll go into contents, resources, FL, data, templates, and then here's that template folder. So whatever template you saved on your desktop, you can just grab it, drag it, and drop it here. Or you can do what I did earlier, and you can right click, and you can make a, um, a folder that represents your projects, like I'm making a shooty folder now. And then I drag my, t my saved files into here, and they will open up like templates. So please comment below if there's a way to optimize this. I'd love to know. Um, this is the best workflow for me so far. And a shout out to the FL Studio 21 Producers group on Facebook. Out of all the people that commented, uh, one person understood exactly what I wanted and gave me the answer. And now I'm sharing that with you. Rock on.